Have you ever told a really big lie? Like something that would get you fired or ruin a relationship, something like that. No, I'm a pretty honest person. I, I don't I don't think I've told a, a lie that is that bad, no. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst and 1 being, like, the least, how big of a lie would you say that you've told? Probably 5, maybe a 6. I've never told a lie that would get me, like, straight up fired. Mm -hmm. But I've told a couple that if, like, there was an accumulation, they would probably fire me. When I talk to somebody, I feel like they're almost just lying anyways. Like, why would someone tell me the truth about something? Oh, yeah. I would say that probably at least half of what people say is probably some sort of lie or an exaggeration. How many lies a day do you think you, t you tell? a day probably less than five i would say i tell less than five lies slash exaggeration a day like, yeah and probably mainly zero or one but usually less than five how about you i mean for instance you know say you're you know you're getting your morning coffee somewhere and the person goes how are you this morning and you go fine good when you really just want to go no i'm not okay i've had a shit morning yeah, but there's most of the time when I lie okay. to somebody, it's a lie of convenience so that, like, I don't have to deal with a situation that doesn't really matter. In the, oh. Right? Like like you said, like, how are you doing? Well, pretty bad, actually. I'm pretty low today. But you yeah, always be like, oh, I'm doing good. Just because I don't want to have that conversation. But, like, what if we, what if you start a trend that for the next week you answer those questions honestly? I wonder what what reactions you would get from people that probably be like, oh, God, didn't ask for this. Oh, I think that society has to have a certain level of bullshit in order to operate smoothly. <laughs> like, we've all got to kind of lie to each other in order for all of this to work. I would actually make an argument that not only do we have to have a certain level of BS, we have to have a pretty high level of BS. But do you have to have a good BS detector? I think it's more important. No, not really. I don't think so. I think people are pretty good at telling when somebody's telling when someone's lying to them about something important. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that in order for society to operate functionally, 75 to 80 percent of everything that we do has to just be BS. Wow, that is a. Uh... I mean, I guess we could really break it down if we wanted to spend the entire hour talking about this, but... But think about it in this way, seems... right? Like, how many times do you ask somebody how they're doing or have a conversation that you're really not interested in or do a job that you really don't care about and pretend like that's important or do other things that like, oh, this is a really big deal. We got to really focus. And like, no, you really don't. On a daily basis, we do less things of importance that actually matter than we think. Now, if that's lying... Or over exaggeration. I don't know if I know the difference, but I definitely think I agree with you to some extent. I just don't know if you're if lying is included in that. Yeah, I don't know if I would go so far as to say it's a lie, but I think that you kind of have to just put up with a certain amount of BS. I asked the audience, "Have you ever told a really big lie? How many people do you think have said said yes? How many people do you think said no?" Oh, I I would say it's an an eight out of ten rate, or you know, eight to yeah, eight out of ten ratio, probably eighty twenty. That I've told a big lie? 62% said yes. 40% said no. I would have thought it would be a little bit higher. Yeah, no. That people no have really way. said a big lie. But then again, they might be lying about the fact that they've never told a really big lie. They might be lying about the fact of the choice they make on the poll, is what you're saying? I think that you do have to just accept the fact that all of life is a certain amount of BS. And then you just move on. And if you can't accept that, you're never really going to be happy. Here's the thing. If everyone was, if honesty was just naturally born into our, you know, uh, uh, way that we look at life or, or act in life, then it wouldn't be one of the, the, the best traits we talk about. All right. Uh, let's see. I got uh, 10 things here for you. Do Rapid it. fire. I'm still trying to think of a good, like, title. If anyone has a good title for this, I'm maybe just... if I had to. I'm just impressed that you have gone from basically like a two-minute introduction of this to getting it down to like under 45 seconds. Like eventually you're just going to get to it. You're not yeah, a man well, who gets to the point. Which is 
funny because I, I feel like that's all my job is, is, is quick decisions and getting to the point. But yeah, you're right. I, I do like to tell a good story and can go to a elaborate. Bit. Few extraneous details. All right. So I uh, picked out 10 random ass things. Nick's going to give us first thoughts on them, and we'll see if I cut them off and keep moving on here to make this quick and expedited. Yeah. Uh, all right. For, first off, uh, <laughs> high beams. Oh, I love high beams. I love a chance to put on my high beams. It's awesome. And I love it. For those of you that may not know what high beams are, they're, they're basically your bright lights on your headlights. And I'm going to go the opposite around, so they're quite annoying. And uh, I'm not even entirely sure that they should even be on vehicles. But that's just me. Oh, it, it's essential. You're not a man who grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Kansas, and you would put on your high beams at least once a week because there wasn't that many people on. Now I miss it. I miss not being able to put on the high beams. Blind people. Well, this holiday just happened, but uh, uh, President's Day. Why is that? Why is that a holiday? I mean, I'm grateful for the, having the holiday off. I like it, but I'm always like, <laughs> which one are we celebrating? We we hear about them enough. They got enough credit. Okay. All right, pop tarts, uh, heated or not. I will eat them cold out of pure laziness, but they do taste better heated. I'd rather heat them up. In general, I would rather heat things up. I said this to somebody the other day. They didn't believe me. I don't think I've ever taken the time or been presented with a Pop-Tart out of a toaster oven. Oh, you got to try it. It's fantastic. It's it's better. I'm not going to go ahead and say it's that much better. The problem is it's good enough cold that you're like, oh, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing this. All right. Uh, gloves without fingers. Why? I'm an adult. Mittens should be banned past the age of 10. You don't Unless... need mittens past the age of 10. Suff suck it up. Unless you're climbing Everest or you're under the age of 10, you should have gloves with fingers. Show me somebody wearing mittens. I'm going to show you an idiot. Oh, my God. I'm, I don't lie. I, Use your damn hands because then you got to, you as an adult have to use your hands too much to be wearing mittens. And then you got to take them off. You got to put something else on. It's a waste of time. You're an adult. Get rid of the mittens. Just for the record, I, I don't agree with you, but I'm going to keep moving How on. How many pairs of mittens do you have there, mitten man? I, I actually don't have a pair of mittens. I'm not against mittens like you, though. I'm against them. Like Firmly anti mitten. I'm I'm okay with mittens. Like I'm okay with mittens. I'm not. I actually think a you know whether you are interested in men or women, uh, I think that your partner can look very cute in a pair of mittens. Oh, so your wife has mittens and you like it? Yeah, she wears a nice little hat like goes along with the mittens. It's a cute little look on her. Okay, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll accept that. Women can wear mittens. Men cannot wear mittens. Men cannot wear mittens. Men should not have mittens. Throw them out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry i wasn't expecting you to go off like that on that one uh all right coming back here uh car air fresheners i've never had one i've never had never. a car air freshener if you have a bunch of car if you have a bunch of air fresheners in your vehicle you are telling me that you do not maintain either your hygiene or your car's cleanliness all right valentine's day chocolate valentine's day is the biggest sham holiday. Nobody wants to be doing this. Men, women, whatever. Nobody wants to be doing this. But you also can't be the one person who doesn't do it, so we've all got to go along. Have you ever been in that situation where you are the person who fails on Valentine's Day? No, although I have had relationships in which the girlfriend or wife, Dawn, if you're listening, <laughs> didn't wish me a happy Valentine's Day, and I was a little upset about it. I was a little hurt. Were you a little hurt? A little bit. Only because I oh. did something and they didn't, right? It would be like any, but I think that's the same thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> Q-tips. Oh, I love them. I use a Q-tip in my ears pretty much every day. I'm going to go ahead and say that the feeling of putting a Q-tip in your ear is second to, if not better, than having relations of a physical nature. It's that feeling pretty... of getting like, oh, 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 I would yeah. almost like, it's close. Now, I've been married for 10 years, so I've, you know, I've, I've been there. 
I've rounded the bases many a time. And if somebody was like, would you rather round the bases or clean out your ears with a Q-tip when they're itchy? Like, ooh, I might just clean oh, out my man. ears with a Q-tip when they're itchy. It's better than sex. Man, there is like, if you have a little bit of wax buildup in there and you get like where you go around a couple of times, but it kind of, oh. like you said, it kind of itches in there. Oof, oof. Give me the goose pimples. Uh, do you say goose bumps or goose pimples? What do you I say? I say goose bumps because I'm a normal person. Mm, that, I mean, if I had the goose pimples, if I had sound like you got a terrible thing, log in. That would be the poll that I ask. That's why goose we don't pimples? have it. I know that's fine. Uh, all right, getting getting to the end of the list here. Okay. Um, <laughs> animals held in captivity, like animals at Sea World. I don't like it when they're at an amusement park. I don't like it when it's there. I think that there's something that's a little bit off about that. But I think being in a zoo is maybe that's not the best thing, but I also think that it raises awareness for the animal as a whole. I'm not going to use the word necessarily evil, but I'm going to go ahead and say that, like, look, that raises awareness about that animal and probably does a lot for protecting the animal overall. But I don't really think that they should be at theme parks. That's a little bit like, hey, wait a minute. How did you – why is this here? I agree with you. I This is probably an unpopular uh, thought, but I think zoos are actually good because I, I think it gives people who can't go on safaris, you know, can't go underwater – and look at sharks, you know, in in in, in non zoo settings, it gives you a respect of the animal that's safe for you and the animal. So I'm 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 all, I'm all in on zoos. I, I like zoos. I like zoos. I think it's probably overall a good thing. All right, uh, last last thing here: face cream. Oh, you got to moisturize, man. You got to take care of your skin. Do you face cream? Of course. I don't know the difference between if face cream is the same as moisturizer, but I'm going to put on some sunscreen and moisturizer. I put on sunscreen every day, even if I'm not going outside. Are you are you serious? Yeah, why wouldn't you? You put sunscreen on when you're well, not even going? It comes in the little thing. You can get, like, lotion with sunscreen. I put on some lotion after I get out of the shower. Okay, okay. I, I, okay. That's why I, I look like this. That's why I look like this, and I'm 65. You're gonna have skin like a leather belt. Yeah, right. I mean, moisturize your face. Take care of yourself. I don't understand that. I think that this was a thing. You and I are old enough to remember when, like, being a metrosexual was an insult. Like, what are you doing over there? Take oh, sure. putting on sunscreen. That's weird. Putting on sunscreen. Were sure. you running? You taking oh. care of your heart? Like, you getting a haircut? <laughs> like, remember <laughs> that? It's quite incredible to see, you know, the the change of thought, the thought process of people from that time to even where we are now. Like, you know, if you're if you're not mid thirties, early forties, uh, if you're much younger, you know, it's it wasn't always it like was this. Unlike you, that, remember, I forgot completely about that. How you would be, people would be like, "Look at this metrosexual combing his hair." Yeah, I'm <laughs> like. I remember even if you were a boy and you used uh, hairspray, you would get picked on for hairspray. Like, Oh, yeah. But I remember being made fun of as like, look at your hair. You got hair gel in it. Like, no, I don't. It's just hair. Okay. Is that your thing? That's it. Let's move on. Uh, so our top five is top five best excuses. Whether it's a personal thing, work thing, top five best excuses. What's your number five? Uh, so number five is pretty basic. I mean, a lot of mine are pretty basic, but, uh, this one's really basic and that's just having some kind of an, of appointments that pops up the, the morning of the day of work as Mm. if you don't schedule appointments weeks out most times, you know, and we have all the ample things now, a calendar on your phone, everything else to let you know ahead of time. But I always love when people are like, yeah, I, uh, I have a doctor's appointment, uh, like in 10 minutes. I'm not gonna be able to come in today. Mm, that's a good one. I always like the last second doctor's appointment. My number five is computer issues. Like, oh, I'm having computer problems. I think that is basically a work from home problem now. But um, you know, because I would just go into the office then. Yeah, we having computer problems, man. Got to fix it here. Can't get my login. 
<laughs> my lord. Computer issues yeah. are a great thing. It's like, oh, the download's not working. Had to read down. Like, oh, computer had to restart. That's why I was 20 minutes late to this meeting. Uh, what's your number four? Uh, like the, like a family member getting sick or, 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 or ill, but it's like your employer or your boss or your coworkers have no idea who that family member is. Like, oh, my aunt Sarah got into a serious car accident. I got to go visit her in Indianapolis. I'm going to be gone for three days. Like my cousin's best friend's former roommate. My, my number four is simply, I forgot. Cause I don't think people can really argue with you that much when you're like, look, I just forgot. Like, well, I've forgotten stuff too. Like you kind of, it's kind of over. It's like somebody saying that they're sorry. It's kind of done. Like, ah, well. See, I, I don't have that one or like that I overslept on here because to me, those, those aren't really excuses because I get it. Like I, I get it 100% because we've all, we've all done it. No matter what stage you are as a professional or what you do, you know, you've either have overslept, you know, or, or you just have forgotten like it happens. Okay, it's number three. So, so this might be like a, a region specific thing, but it's always on days where we're going to get snow or rain or something where someone always goes, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it in. Weather's bad. And then you look up like where they live and it's like, Tony, you do have power. I'm looking at your house right now and it says you have power. <laughs> no, I, I really don't have power. <laughs> right. Tell me like, you don't want to work today. Car trouble is a really good one. Car trouble yeah, car. could be a really good one. I didn't put it on the list, but car trouble should be on the honor mention. Mine's a little bit related to that. My number three is traffic. Traffic's bad. Nobody See, in a big city is going to argue with you about traffic. They, but so as so as I've told people before that have told me that I say, okay, well you get here when you get here, and then you can just hear the deflation in their voice, like like they want you to say, okay, don't worry about coming in, then just go ahead and turn around, like. You know, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Like, no, if you're already in the car, get your butt to work. My number two, I think, is the best sick excuse that you can have, which is stomach. Because everybody knows that that's like, that can happen at any time. Sure. You're generally pretty sick, and you can also recover from it pretty quickly. It's like the perfect illness is a st- I got a stomach bug, because that could be like 12 hours. And so if my you were number out- one. Go ahead. My number one, not to cut you off, my number one is is pretty much the same thing, but it's more specific, and that's food poisoning. Oh, food poisoning is a great one. Right, because like, like, oh, you don't feel better now. And, and you can't really prove it, right? You can't, you know, it comes and it goes pretty quick, and it's just like, you know, first off, why are you calling? You're supposed to start in 10 minutes. You sound like you just woke up, but you've been throwing up for the last three hours. Get the fuck out of here. John is a Sorry. man who has heard many excuses in his life. I don't know why you didn't put this in, but I think this is the ultimate excuse and possibly a reason for having them in the first place. I could justify it solely. Kids. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, kids. Kids kids are the best excuse you could ever have. Maybe justifying <laughs> having kids because if you tell someone with kids that your kids are the reason you can't do something, that is the end of that conversation and there is no questions being asked. So actually, that that's one of my few honorable mentions as kids. I didn't put it on the list Strictly because that is probably the only reason why I call in sick or or, or don't show up to work are my kids. Like, I get it. If if you have kids, I mean, it's not an excuse. Kids ruin everything and they're disease vectors. And it's just, yeah, they if you have seven sick days for the year, you're going to use seven of them on kids alone. What's on your honorable mention? Uh, So these two are are really hyper specific, but in my time of working as a professional, I swear that I've heard these, uh, uh, we'll say three, I'll I'll break the one down into two, but uh, back injuries, back and shoulder injuries specifically, like it's hard to argue against those. Yeah, Uh, you can't really argue with back. I would agree with that, like hurt my back. and And then it's always like house issues, like my furnace went out or my basement flooded. I'm perfectly okay with people lying to me about not coming to work. You have anything in your honorable mention? The only thing I had would be car trouble 